the sun, he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, the buzzards and all, come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God. Now, there are two suppers here in chapter 19. One is the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, which we looked at in verse 7. Here's another supper, uh, one that God prepares for the vultures. Come for the supper of the great God that you might eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, that is the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth, and their armies were gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So they're going to try, how foolish, but they're going to try to keep Jesus from coming and reigning. And, and how foolish uh, to think that they could prevent the Lord from coming and reigning, but so they attempt to do, to make war against the Lord and against his army, against the church. And the beast, or the Antichrist, was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, Revelation chapter 13, we studied it, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. And these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. There are different places for the punishment of the wicked. There is what is called Hades or Sheol, in Hebrew, Hades in Greek. And that is a place that seemingly is located in the heart of the earth. And um, that is a temporary place. It's like you are guilty of a crime, you've been arrested, there's no bail, but you haven't yet been tried. But while you are awaiting trial, you are kept imprisoned. And Hades seems to be that prison for the sinners as they await the day of trial and the day of judgment, which we will be getting to in the next chapter. And uh, There is then what they, the Greek is abuso. It's translated pit and often translated the bottomless pit. This seems to be the place of incarceration for evil spirits, angels, fallen angels, not human beings, but fallen angels. And this abuso, uh, we will find that Satan will be bound and cast into the abuso, verse 2 or verse 1 of chapter 20, uh, into this bottomless pit, and uh, he will be there for a thousand years while Christ is reigning with his church over the earth. It's interesting that this abuso will be opened in the book of Revelation and that there will be hordes of demon spirits that will come over the earth and men will be tormented by these demonic spirits uh, throughout the world in this great tribulation period. You remember when Jesus came to Gadara and there was this demon-possessed man who came in a threatening, menacing manner toward Jesus. And he cried out, the demons in him cried out to Jesus. 
And they said to Jesus, what have we to do with you? Do not send us to the Abuso before our time, knowing that it seems to be the place of incarceration for spirit beings, the demons. And uh, so that is the second place. The third is Gehenna. Now, Hades is not eternal. We'll get it in the next chapter. One day, death and Hades will give up the dead which are in them. And they will stand then before the great judgment seat of God. And those whose names are not written in the book of life will be cast into Gehenna. This is the second death. That is eternal. And so here we find that here at the beginning of the thousand year reign of Christ, the beast and the false prophet and the antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into Gehenna. It seems like they will be the only two occupants of it for the thousand years. At the end of the thousand years, when Satan is released from the abuso and goes out to deceive and to gather a, another army to try to overthrow the reign of Christ, at that point, he will be cast into Gehenna. And it says where the beast and the false prophet are, not where they were destroyed, not where they were incinerated, but where they are. And so uh, it would seem that Gehenna is a, is a place that doesn't quit. But here uh, we find that the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast or the Antichrist was taken with him, the false prophet who wrought the miracles before him, go back to chapter 13, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and those that worshipped his image. And they were cast alive into this lake of fire, or Gehenna, uh, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeds out of his mouth, and all of the fowls were filled with with their flesh. So uh, we, we find that, um, you know, the, the war is over. Jesus speaks and uh, the powers that are aligned against him will be destroyed. No real battle. Uh, he is king of kings. He's lord of lords. And, uh, you know, the powers of, as Martin Luther wrote, the powers of darkness grim, we tremble not at him. One little word will fell him. The word of Jesus, it'll all be over. And he will establish now God's kingdom upon the earth. And so as we move on into the next three chapters of the book of Revelation, we'll see the great white throne judgment of God and the doom of Satan. And then... Chapter 21, all things new, the new heaven, new earth, and we go out now beyond the thousand year reign of Christ, we go into the eternal realm, and uh, what a, some exciting things ahead as we uh, finish out uh, the whole story. Very little is told us of, of what's going to happen in the eternal realm, but we know it's going to be great. Father, we thank you for the word that is teaching us of things yet to come. And that again, Jesus is right at the heart of it. For the testimony of Jesus is the word of prophecy. And we see him, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, leading his church, to victory, bringing peace to the earth, bringing his glorious thousand-year reign over the earth. 
And Lord, how we long for that day.